Hello and welcome back to Polytoots. Uh, today we're going to be looking at how I made the ripples for this water ripple sh shader. And if you haven't seen the tutorial yet, uh, hopefully if I remember I'll put a link right in the middle of the screen. Um, but this tutorial is just about how I made the actual, like the looping ripple animation itself, which was by far the hardest thing um, about this entire shader. And the way that I started it was probably the most tedious way that I could have. Um, it's essentially, the the end goal here is to create some sort of looping frame animation of a ripple. And you can do this either like hand draw it, or you can have a particle system, or if your video editor of choice has that sort of functionality built in, then you know you could do it there. But weirdly enough, the option that I chose was uh, to do it with a shader. Like I, I know how to do radial gr gradients and I know how to make them sort of animate and so I figured uh, that would be the quickest way for me to do this. Uh, probably, you know, not the best. Um, it's up to you kind of how you want to approach this first step um, or, you know, you could do this entire thing in a different way but I'm just showing you kind of like what I was using to create these looping animations with the software that I had at hand, which was just sort of Unity, uh, Photoshop, and a video editor. And so uh, yeah, I was tempted to uh, to do this with a particle system, uh, which would have been pretty easy. And again, I would just sort of record the screen of the actual animation, and then I just convert that into uh, a clip. Um, but I decided to do it this way, um, so, you know, it is what it is. I'm not saying that you have to do it this way, but uh, this is just what, what, what I ended up doing. Um, I'm not putting too much focus on the shader that I'm making now, because, you know, that's not really the point. I'm just sort of showing you any way that you can get this sort of looping animation um, to, to occur is, you know, entirely up to you. I mean, if you want, you can uh, hopefully see what n nodes I'm using here and just c copy it if you wanted to do it the exact same way. Otherwise, you know, how you create this is entirely up to you. So what I did here was I just slowed the animation down and then I would record this with a uh, screen capture. And then I would bring that into a video editor where I would just basically cl clip it off at a point where I think that it's sort of a nice loop. And this, this bit's really, really quick. And then It's over to Photoshop where I import that exported clip. And uh, this window here, pretty important. Uh, this is where I specified the amount of frames to import. So it would sort of skip every other frame, if, uh, you know, so you could import every t two frames, every f four frames. Essentially, I was trying to condense this clip down, which was probably about sort of 400 frames in total to about 16 or so. And uh, I think it ended up coming in about 17 frames. So I just removed the last one. Um, and the reason I want 16 frames is because I know that this is going to be uh, like on a tiled texture sheet where uh, there will be 16 animation frames of all of these ripples, which themselves will have 16 uh, frames of animation. I, I apologize if that sounds a bit confusing. Hopefully as you continue to watch, it'll kind of make sense. Um, so from here, what I was trying to do was create a automated action to just remove the black um, but it didn't really work very well and I ended up having to kind of go back and do it manually uh, as you see here so each frame I have to use the color picker and then tweak the values um, which seems a bit tedious but there's only 16 frames so um, you know it w wasn't too bad there is uh, there's some quote that I kind of keep in my mind uh, although I can't actually remember it entirely it's something to do with you know don't spend hours trying to find like the most efficient way to do something if you could actually just do it manually in like t 10 minutes or something you know obviously I've butchered the absolute crap out of that quote but you understand the point that you know oftentimes especially nowadays people try to find like the quickest way to do something but they'll spend so long trying to find that that it would have been much quicker for them to just kind of do it the old-fashioned way. Um, yeah. So anyway, from here, this is uh, this is the bit where 
I basically I have all my frames in a folder and I just duplicate those folders and I give them all a color and I'm just moving them around uh, on this one document here and this will be the uh, the basis for all of my other frames so I'm going to eventually sort of just change which layer each of these ripples start on just to you know obviously make it seem a bit random and then I create a new document and this will be my actual texture sheet and so the, the one on the left this is the one where I'm basically creating these frames of animation so I'm going up and down the list I'm hiding the current layer and then enabling the layer above that and of course this is a looping animation which means if it happens to be on layer 16 then all that would happen is I unhide uh, sorry I don't unhide I hide layer 16 and then I unhide layer 1 so it just you know repeats and you only have to do this for 16 frames uh, so it's you know it seemed kind of okay to me there are uh, I believe sort of automated ways uh, to get sort of this nice uh, raindrop ripple animation effect um, but uh, I don't know this way it just seemed like a, like a quick and easy way to do it for me and I I would kind of have complete control over everything uh, but yeah I mean if anyone out there knows of, of, of just some I don't know almost like a like a ripple generator that will also somehow do like t tiling and whatnot then I don't know I'm uh, I'm all ears for that but uh, for me looking around couldn't really find too much so I just I just decided to do it this way um, yeah, and so at this point, this is the texture sheet finished. So it's just 16 frames of animation in one texture. And so now it's ready to go over to Unity. So from in here, uh, all I have to do is convert this into a normal map and then just st stick it on a, uh, a shader that I've Kind of already pre-made but it's just uh it's just the standard flipbook node like i'm not doing anything special with this yet so you'll see as i, as I put this on uh it's all just tiling everything's kind of samey samey um but yeah i mean if you've seen my other tutorial then you know that uh with a bit of sort of playing with the shader you can get this to not seem so tiled you know you can increase the sort of randomness of it all um, yeah in fact let me just show you here so this is with uh, you know a, a bit more work in, in into the shader so it's just a bit more a bit more random you can't really tell that it's just one texture just looping over and over again but yeah I mean if you combine this with um, obviously all the uh, other textures then you get the result that uh, that I showed you at the beginning of the video uh, in fact if we just do a little bit of a rewind now then yeah here it is so that's the sort of end result of what all of that looked like um, yeah so if you haven't seen my shader tutorial on how to actually create this then uh, the link is at the start of the video or also in the description of this video um, yeah and if you have seen it then at least I hope uh, this has sort of helped a little bit on how to create ripples but uh, yeah so that's it thank you for watching and I will see you in the next one